In this video I'm going to be taking you through my process for making simple snowfall in Blender using simulation nodes. It's very beginner friendly and um, hopefully you'll learn something about how to use simulation nodes. Alright, so to begin with I'm going to delete out everything in our default file. And I'm going to start by adding in a plane. And this plane is just going to emit the particles that are going to become our falling snow. So I'm going to move it up a little bit and scale it up in edit mode. Now in the Geometry Nodes editor, I'm going to create a new system on this and first of all we want to distribute some points on this plane. So I'm going to add in a Distribute Points on Faces node and now we have some points here, I want to move them down. I'm going to use a simulation zone for this, so plug the points into the group input and output here. Now everything in this purple zone will be repeated once per frame, so I want to set the position of these particles every frame to first of all move down by a small amount. So if I play this they just move down. And now I want to continuously spawn particles, so to do that I'm going to use a join geometry right after the start of the simulation zone and plug our very same points back into that join geometry and I'll just route them around like that and now if I play this you can see we get continuous particles spawning and all moving down. Um, now to change the random pattern of this I'm going to plug into the seed the frame input and now as I play this the pattern changes every single frame so we get a bit more randomness. And this is essentially the basis for our snow. Um, I'm first of all going to turn the density way down to something a lot lower, like 0.1. And to randomize their motion, I'm instead going to use a noise texture in this uh, set position node instead of just a single value. So let's add in a noise texture. Plug the color into the offset. And if I press play initially, you see they all fly up towards the top right. And that's just because we need to untick normalize so the values uh, go from minus 0.5 to 0.5. And now we get this sort of random motion and first of all the effect of this noise is way too strong so I'm going to turn it way way down uh, using a vector math scale mode and I'll set this to 0.01. Now if I play this you can see they just very subtly move around. Now to get them moving generally down I'm going to use another vector math node and I'm going to set this to subtract and then in the Z I'm just going to subtract uh, one from this so they will now uh, slowly fall down in the Z component. If you want them to fall faster you can subtract more from the, from uh, this value here or you could increase the scale but that will also increase their random motion slightly. You can see they're sort of uh, moving with a bit too much random like jitteriness right now and that's just because the actual scale on this noise texture is too high so the sort of frequency of the wobbling is too much. So if I turn that down to 1 or probably even lower, like 0.1, uh, we will get some better results. Uh, but right now you can see there's a, a little bit of a, somewhat of an issue where they, they sort of follow the same pattern. And to change this, I'm going to set this noise texture to 4D so we can randomize this per point. And in the W, I'm going to plug in a random value. And I'm going to set this to integer so we get some bigger numbers. And I'll leave it at 0 to 100. And now each particle will have their own sort of random motion and they won't be uh, all following the same paths. And that's really as simple as it, as it is for the actual motion of these uh, points. And you could go ahead and bake this at this stage in the physics tab under simulation nodes. Um, or you could actually use a bake node in the node tree. Set this to animation. And um, in order to bake you have to save the file. So I'll just save this somewhere. And now you can go ahead and either bake with this node or bake in the file. I actually prefer baking on the node as it's a bit more visual uh, where the uh, baking is happening. So I'll go ahead and bake that for 250 frames. And now this motion is sort of locked in and we're not recalculating this um, every frame. So now what we have is just a bunch of points basically. And we want to just instance on our little snow clumps onto these points. So first of all, I'm going to instance on points and I'm going to instance a sphere on these. I'm going to use an icosphere which is just a uniform sphere. Give it some more subdivisions and let's shade it smooth and give it a set position as well and uh, with this set position I'm just going to displace this slightly to randomize the shape 
Going to use a noise texture again, not the factor, but the color, so it's three dimensional. Untick normalize, and then use a vector math again, set to scale. Set this to something much lower, something like that. Play with the scale on this. Just want an overall distortion on this shape. And that should be fine for our little snow clump. We just need to give this a material now. And I'm just going to make a new material um, on this object. It doesn't particularly matter, but I'm going to call it snow. And then let's set that in here and plug that into our instance. And now if we have a look at that, you can see that they're just way too big at the minute. So I'm going to decrease the radius on this icosphere to something more snow sized. And if I do this, I'm going to also have to change the scale on this noise texture um, because of uh, the fact that we're now uh, displacing something much, much smaller. It's going to require different uh, sort of scale values on these two things. And now the problem is they're all oriented in the same way and out of uniform scale. So we need a couple of random value nodes. So I'll start with the scale, a uh, float random value plugged into the scale. I'd set the minimum and the maximum. And then in terms of the rotation, I'm going to grab a vector random value node, plug that into rotation. And uh, for the maximum, I'm going to set this to be around three. And to uh, have these rotate as they fall, I'm going to use a uh, vector math node after this random value and just add some number to these rotations as they fall. So we're going to use the seconds input. And now if I play that, you can see as they fall, they just sort of spin. And if you wanted to speed this up or slow this down, you could add a multiply in after here, but I'm quite happy with how it is at the minute. And maybe turn the scale down a little bit, but I think that's roughly uh, it for the actual uh, geometry node setup of this. We now just need to shade these. So uh, back in the layout tab, I'm going to go into a uh, rendered mode. Um, actually, I'll do this in material preview mode for now. And if I open up a shading window, I'm going to uh, make sure I'm on the snow material and let's add in a Fresnel node. I basically want to feather the uh, shape of these uh, around the edges so that they're more solid in the middle than they are on the edges so we don't get any hard lines. So I'm just going to uh, plug the Fresnel into the alpha and then I'm going to use a color ramp node to sort of invert this because you can see we're getting solid on the edges right now. And I'll set this color ramp node to ease and then I will pull the white all the way to the left and the black to the right and then I'll pull them quite close together something like 0.055 works pretty well for that and uh, as you play this you can see because of the noise we're not really seeing much so in the render settings I usually turn off um, temporal reprojection which is basically a denoise for EV um, during like animation playback and it's just not working very well on these sort of small dots and yeah, that's pretty much it for the shader. I mean, there's not really much to it. I might turn up the roughness and the uh, color to be pure white, but you can now light these, you know, properly using, uh, if I turn on scene lights, I could add in, I could add in a light here to light the snow and sort of integrate it into any sort of render scene that you had. But yeah, that's pretty much it. It's a very simple tutorial, so hopefully, uh, you learnt something useful about simulation nodes in this as they can be a little bit daunting to get into but hopefully this shows you that they're actually quite easy and you can do very simple stuff with them and I think this is even easier than doing it with a particle system. So yeah, thanks for watching.